Hello everyone, welcome to Percussionology. Today I wanted to talk about rolls on marimba, how to introduce that, and some of the things that you should look for as far as communicating to your students the proper way to approach the instrument. The first thing we need to understand is that a roll on a marimba is for the purposes of sustaining the note, and we're using a single stroke roll in order to sustain that sound. The first thing that I do in order to get my students to play their rolls is I have them just play the roll at a very slow speed, and I just have them basically say that it's going to be a single stroke roll and we're alternating and I just make sure that they understand that we're playing in the center of the bar and we're stacking the mallet. So an important thing to understand that when I'm doing this is stacking the mallets is having one mallet on top of the other. It could be the left hand on top or the right hand on top. Most of the playing that I usually do, do with my students, our hands are side by side so we can play in the center of the note. For the purposes of rolling, I'm gonna be playing at a lower dynamic level. So this is not gonna allow me the ability to put the notes right in the center. So what I'm going to do is stack the mallets so I can make sure that the, my hands can move without making contact with one another. Normally I'm here side by side. If I take the mallets and stack them, I'm gonna put my right hand on top of the center point and my left hand on the bottom. Both mallets should be equidistant from the center of the note. If, but mo if one hand moves out, the other should move out as well so we're getting a consistent sound. The closer my hand moves to the string or the node of the note or the bottom, I'm gonna end up one with a more contact sound and this is gonna give me a more resonant sound as I move closer to the center. So for this purpose, I'm gonna put my right hand on top, my left hand on the bottom on C. All I'm gonna do is get a nice even roll speed. It does not have to be fast. A lot of students think that in order for the note to sustain, they have to move their mouth super quick and I try to get them to understand it's just a a slow single stroke roll and should sound something like this. Now in the process of doing this, especially if you teach your students a back fulcrum where we're gripping with the back of our fingers, thumbs, and index fingers, I've talked about this in one of my other videos, it is really important to get them to understand that the mallet is actually going to move or wiggle in their hand a little bit when they're moving their wrist. Okay, so I actually make sure that they understand this and they're not squeezing. So even though I've done my water pistols in the past, now I'm trying to get them to understand that the mallet is gonna move a little bit, but I'm not actually using my fingers in order to make the roll happen. The fulcrum is still in the front and I'm allowing my fingers to wiggle. So with this wiggle that I have in my hands, what I'm going to do is apply that to the note. So again, right hand on top, left hand on the bottom. Just trying to get a nice even sound and not trying to go too fast. Now, the thing that's always interesting when you're trying to introduce roles to students is that you're not necessarily playing a specific rhythm. In some cases of music for younger percussionists, you can absolutely dictate a rhythm to them that will give you a sustained sound. But for the purposes of being able to do this, what we're gonna do is try to get them to develop some independence with their foot tap and their actual roll speed. So the first thing that I do before we actually do a foot tap is I just have them count out loud while they play a role for one whole note and I have them say lift when they get to count one to indicate the rest in the next measure. So I would have them do something like this. One te, two te, three te, four te, lift. Once they get pretty comfortable with that and I see that their hands are not moving with the rate of speed that they're counting, I'm gonna introduce a foot tap. What I'm trying to make sure is that their foot tap is staying steady while their hands are moving at a different rate. The, usually the first thing that happens is they're gonna start rolling and their foot's gonna start moving super quick. So what I'm gonna do is make sure their foot tap starts, down, up, down, up, and then I'm gonna have them play. So we're going down, up, down, up, ready, play. One te, two te, three te, four te, lift. And basically they're just lifting off that last note so they're not getting an accent release and we're just getting a nice release of sound at the end of it. This is something that you'll have to do every day with your students so that they develop this independence and steady foot tap while they're doing it. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than what we just did, just rolling and making sure they're just developing this consistent hand motion. Some things that you'll need to consider when students are rolling on notes is how your hands stack and what note you're leading to the next. If I'm playing something where I'm going to be going to the right, 
it might be conducive for the students to start with the hands on top or on the bottom, but these are some things that you're gonna to need to make sure you dictate to your students so it's more comfortable. So I'm gonna have my students, if they're saying starting on C sharp and we're gonna release on D, what I would do is have the hand stacked so the right hand is on the bottom, and when I roll, I would be able to easily release with this hand. If I was doing it the other way and I was starting with the right hand and moving, I would have to kind of come around and it's gonna cause an accent. So I would go one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, one. And I wanna to try to make sure that they're not accenting that. If I'm doing something that's the other way, let's say I'm starting on C and I'm going to a B, I could release with my right hand, but I might wanna consider which hand's on top. Something where I might change it so that my right hand's on top is if I'm going from, let's say, rolling on C and I'm gonna release on a B flat. At this point, I would have my right hand on top and I'd roll on the C to release to the B flat. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two, one. So now that I can have that not being impeded by my left hand, if I were to do it the other way, it would be something like this, which would be incorrect. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two, one. So I might have to reach over or try to reach around in order to be able to play that next note. So these are some things you need to consider when you're playing passages of music and students have a role. What will eliminate the awkwardness is literally which hand is on top when they're rolling. You can get into a whole nother thing where we start the rolls with our left hand and release with their left hand, but a lot of the stacking stuff can help with just the immediate awkwardness that younger students might have. Something that will be a little bit more interesting in order to develop the role is just taking a simple C scale and having students play a role, let's say, in half notes and making sure they're counting out loud and tapping their foot and just changing the notes and trying to see if they can get a nice smooth roll speed as they move up and down the instrument, something like this. Down, up, one, te, two, te, three, te, four, te, one, te, two, te, three, te, four, te, one, te, Trying to make sure that the roll speed doesn't change even though they move across the notes. That usually takes a lot of time. Students will usually put space in between every single note that they play. And just trying to get them to realize that all they have to do is not stop the speed and then just move the hands over. And trying to get them to understand that if they keep this the same no matter what they're doing, it doesn't matter how they change and move right and left and that will create a more smooth sound. As they get stronger, they'll be able to play it louder. But again, the mallet should be able to move in the back of the hand. When they move up the instrument, just something to think about, you're probably gonna have a little bit faster roll speed. And when they go to lower notes, it's gonna be a little bit slower roll speed. Just something else to think about when you're trying to teach students the, the high notes and low notes. It's really easy to get caught up in saying high and low, and to your younger mallet students, this is extremely confusing when you're actually going right and left. You can take the time to explain to them that high is right, that going up the staff is to the right, and then going down the staff is to the left. As a teacher, it would be a little bit more applicable to refer to higher notes as notes to the right, especially when you're teaching it. So instead of saying, I, we're gonna play the C scale and we're gonna go up, up is to the right. So we're gonna play our C scale and we're gonna go to the right. And we're gonna play our uh, C scale and go to the left. This will help a lot with uh, some confusion and getting them to understand this very abstract concept. And as you say it more and more, you can, in, you can ingrain that in your students, but with your younger students, it will be a little bit more complex idea. I hope everything on mallet rolls has been helpful to you guys. If you have any other questions relating to mallet rolls specifically, this is just kind of the beginning of how to approach mallet rolls for marimba. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at percussionology at gmail.com. Please like the video and also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you have any questions there, I'd love to be able to help however I can. So best of luck to you. Hope this is helpful and see you on the next video.